These are OnlyFans numbers. I usually got show feet to go this viral. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Scholars, welcome back to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist, a master educator, and I try to provide you with the best in our historical content if you like the video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, interact. Thank you. There are many great American artists out there that we can examine. And there are probably none finer than Charles White an individual known and affiliated with the New Negro Movement, also known as the uh, Chicago Black Renaissance. So today, we're going to jump in, as you know, just click on the video, and uh, you know what you're getting into today as we explore Charles White. When we think about artists, we oftentimes think about an individual that has a compulsion to share their story, share their narrative of life, and oftentimes they have a unique perspective. And I think a primary example of that is Charles White. And not only is Charles White an exemplary artist, but also one of the greatest art teachers of his generation. I have very little patience for stupidity. Mr. White was born in Chicago in 1918. He began to read about and develop an appreciation for the Harlem Renaissance when he was about middle school age. And he began to question why some of the black leaders that he was learning about and reading about were never talked about in a formal school setting. And unfortunately, he was quickly labeled as a rebellious, problematic child. It was also around this time period that his mother was working full time and didn't really have the extra money to afford for childcare or anything like that. So she would oftentimes drop him off at the Chicago library where he would research things on his own. And it didn't take very long for him to start taking some courses at the Art Institute and walking around the gallery. He also gained a quick appreciation for artists like Winslow Homer and George Ennis. Again, with a full-time working mom, summertime was a little bit more hectic, so she would send him down to other family members in Mississippi. You see, his folks had come up to Chicago, to the south side of Chicago, from Mississippi during the Great Migration, and established some roots there in Chicago. But he would hear the stories and learn from his family members, and some of which actually spent some of their youth enslaved. But be that as it may, he questioned things, he learned things, and he wouldn't just accept a dismissive answer. He wanted legitimate answers to these probing questions. And quite frankly, there weren't really good answers to the questions that he was asking. And because he was labeled as a bit of a troublemaker of sorts, he did not feel very welcomed at school. And that caused him essentially to drop out of high school. Now he was up for art scholarships and things like that, but he would win these competitions and when it was discovered that he was black, they said that there was an error and they would end up giving those scholarships to white students. He had been accepted into a couple different art schools and once they recognized who they gave that scholarship to, that admission was revoked and given to other students until eventually he won a full scholarship to the Art Institute of Chicago and not only was he an exceptional artist but also began to earn money as an art teacher. You're a lucky, lucky, lucky little boy. Charles White was one that always wanted to provide access to his art as easily as possible. He did not want any barricades or barriers to individuals that wanted to see his work. And he was showing artwork at a time when he wasn't even allowed to go into some of the galleries that were showing it. And he put up with it and he broke down barriers and he paid the price so that others could take advantage and be included in their own art shows. And eventually he would get into printing and other sorts of production of art and he wanted everyone to be able to have equal and quick access to his artworks. And he loved when people would tear them out of magazines or cut them out of whatever source they could find them and hang them up in a barber shop or wherever. 
He loved people consuming his work, and that also went for the education that he provided. Eventually, he would have students kind of walking in and sitting in the back of a classroom, but he'd say, you know what? Come to the front. Take a look. He wanted people to learn. If they couldn't pay the tuition, it didn't matter to him. He wasn't necessarily concerned with that. He was concerned with people that were eager to learn having access to what they needed to be successful and that maybe included his instruction and he recognized that and quite literally he gave it away over the course of his career he would create art in painting drawing lithography as well as mural painting in 1938 he would work as a part of the mural division of the federal art project in illinois and he was very much influenced by the mexican mural painters like diego rivera and many others and this work with the WPA was very much creating work that depicted a positive image of the black community. And along with that, he was fighting for equality and very much became an influential and important figure with the Chicago black renaissance. Hey, can I, quick question. Now, the Chicago Black Renaissance sprang out of the south side of Chicago in the 30s to the mid-50s. And much like the Harlem Renaissance, although different in that it was not nearly as popular, especially on a national level, because it was about a decade older and it just did not have the publicity and the money behind it like you had in the Harlem Renaissance in New York. But out of this movement, we saw writers like Gwendolyn Brooks, musicians like Louis Armstrong, and many, many artists, including Charles White, and the major hub of that art that was being produced on the visual side was largely coming from the Art Institute of Chicago. That's my burden, and that's how I see it. As mentioned, Charles White was very much an educator. He took that job seriously. He loved that job. He loved working with artists that wanted to go forward and he would go to the head of the class and he ran it as though he was holding court. He ran it like a Baptist minister. He spoke and he motivated and he influenced people on a level that was so just embedded in their DNA. It's truly incredible to hear some of the things that were going on in his classroom. You know, I've thought about it a lot. How, why, how I do these things. How do I think? How does an artist think? Because it's a fascinating uh, uh, thing, you know, because you get to say, why, why am I so goddamn unique? Do you need something outside yourself to, to, to get this thing going? To say, well, why don't you be an artist? I can see where somebody could get wrapped up in a moon, reflection of a moon on a, uh, and paint on black velvet, the reflection of the moon on the water, and, uh, and a palm tree coming off. I wouldn't question that person could conv probably convince me that this is a very meaningful thing to him, and he gets turned on by the moon reflecting on the water. Uh, but uh, I, I could still say that as far as he's convincing me through the work itself, man, that cat ain't doing a damn thing. It's like a cat marrying a chick, cause she's pretty. She got all the features, all the facial structures of the so-called ideal concept of beauty. He marries her for that service thing. And could care less what's inside. You damn right. Over the course of his teaching career, he would teach in Chicago, New Orleans, New York, Washington DC and he would end up in Los Angeles. You know as an artist and an educator he would inspire so many of the following generations of artists. Artists that want to get better should examine Charles White. Lithographers that want to get better at printing should examine Charles White. And If you want to improve your drawing or your painting you need to examine Charles White. And if you're an art educator, you need to take a really hard look at Charles White and examine your practice and see if there's anything that he did in his classroom, in his art studio, that can transition into yours because there is none better than Mr. Charles White. <laughs> I love bringing that to you. Thanks for following along. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.